so uncivilized. Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we have some really exciting Obi-Wan Kenobi news because Ewan McGregor gave a small tease last night at the Emmys. While confirming that the series has indeed wrapped up filming, he also spoke about the type of show that Kenobi is going to be. He stated it won't disappoint fans but warned that it's going to be a very different experience to George Lucas's Star Wars. In essence, we should be prepared for a type of Star Wars show that we've not seen before. This is mainly because of the volume that they used which they also used on the Book of Boba Fett and The Mandalorian, and the newer technology more generally that is available to Disney and Lucasfilm. We have to bear in mind that it's been 16 years since 2005, when Ewan last portrayed Obi-Wan, and a lot of things have changed since then in terms of technological advances and what is possible to achieve, especially when it comes to Star Wars. This, in and of itself, is enough to make the series feel very different. Out of everything he mentioned last night, this is the part that got me the most excited. Ever since the show was announced last year, fans have been wondering if the series is going to continue in the same style as Revenge of the Sith. Now evidently since the George Lucas era of Star Wars is now long gone, Deborah Chow is the showrunner of this series and the style is inevitably not going to be the same. But Ewan McGregor discussing what to expect has gotten me very curious. So let's dive into this article and talk about it. Ewan McGregor says Star Wars spin-off Obi-Wan Kenobi will not disappoint after accepting his first primetime Emmy award during Sunday's ceremony. The Obi-Wan actor, a winner for outstanding lead actor in a limited or anthology series or movie for Holston, teased the making of the live-action Star Wars series by calling it a different experience from the George Lucas-directed film trilogy. Obi-Wan Kenobi reunites McGregor with his two-time Star Wars prequels co-star Hayden Christensen, who reprises his role as Darth Vader for the lightsaber-swinging rematch of the century when the spin-off premieres 2022 on Disney+. We finished shooting our series and it was really, really good fun. I really enjoyed working with director-executive producer Deborah Chow and I think it will not disappoint. This is what McGregor said of Obi-Wan backstage at the 2021 Emmys and he went on to say the new technology that we employed, doing it is cool and it was a different experience than making the original three films that I did. And evidently he's talking here about the prequel trilogy. When speaking about the plot itself, McGregor said he has one task left, which is to keep Luke safe. Last year when the show was announced, Kathleen Kennedy described the series as the rematch of the century and hinted that Obi-Wan is going to go on a rollicking adventure. So that's the article and what I gather as well as many fans have done is that this series is not going to be what we expect. Now I completely understand why some fans might be a bit apprehensive and worried about a show that is going to take a few risks and be different to what we expect but there is no real reason to worry and actually there's a lot to be reassured about. Ewan McGregor himself has put a lot of input into the directing and producing process which is something he revealed on Actors on Actors and Ewan McGregor has given his seal of approval publicly many times over the last few months and while you might argue that he's got to do that to promote his own project, he never once seemed hesitant. The man is a massive Star Wars fan first and foremost, and the show is in really great hands under Deborah Chow. She's done some amazing work for The Mandalorian and truly seems to understand what it takes to capture the essence of what George created. Naturally, having Hayden Christensen and Ewan McGregor back is enough to make me so grateful that we as fans get to experience this reunion and continuation of our beloved prequel trilogy. Overall, I definitely think the Kenobi series will have a lot of nostalgia but also a few surprises in there as well. And the way that you successfully continue the story of a legacy character like Obi-Wan is by adding to the existing universe. Having said that, for continuity's sake after Revenge of the Sith and prior to the original trilogy, there are plot points which do in some way need to happen. We have Star Wars lore for a reason and that should be respected and never broken. For example, Qui-Gon Jinn's Force Ghost communicating with Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan watching over Luke, Obi-Wan's PTSD, and so on. But newer elements should definitely be brought in to expand on what we think we know about this dark age after the rise of the Empire. And to this extent, in many ways, the show has a very difficult task of staying true to the authenticity of what's going on, while also crafting subplots and new characters that fit into and build upon that story. I've spoken extensively on the Obi-Wan Kenobi series here on my channel, and as you know, it's the one show I'm most looking forward to. We need to see Obi-Wan's PTSD PTSD, and even though the series takes place 10 years after Revenge of the Sith and 10 years prior to A New Hope, 
we need to see Ewan McGregor's portrayal of Obi-Wan kind of slowly morph into that of Alec Guinness, a broken Jedi in exile who's had a long time to dwell on the tragedy following the Clone Wars, the loss of his apprentice and best friend, the loss of his true love, and much more. And there are a lot of plot points in the original trilogy, namely in A New Hope, which currently don't make too much sense, and the Kenobi series should address this and bridge a gap to make those make sense. Given that Kenobi bridges the gap between the prequels and the original trilogy, it really is the only show that can give us some of these answers. They're by no means plot holes because that implies inconsistency, but they are gaps in the story that need to be explained. Let me give you a couple of examples. In Star Wars Episode 4, after saving Luke from the Sand People, Obi-Wan brings Luke and his droids back to his hut. When speaking about Luke's father, Anakin, Obi-Wan gets out his former apprentice's lightsaber. Obi-Wan says the following. Your father wanted you to have this when you were old enough. But your uncle wouldn't allow it. Now, neither in the prequels nor the Clone Wars did we ever hear Anakin mention that if one day he has a child, he wants them to inherit his lightsaber. Now, evidently, after Anakin's turn to Darth Vader and after their duel on Mustafar, Obi-Wan picked up Anakin's lightsaber and once he went into exile on Tatooine, he kept it in his hut. Now, back to what Obi-Wan said, just as he lied about the identity of Luke's father, he could have made this up as well, playing with Luke's emotions just to get him to join the rebel cause. But what if Obi-Wan wasn't lying and Anakin did actually express this at one point. Given that Hayden Christensen, Ewan McGregor and Joel Edgerton are returning, maybe Lucasfilm could find a way of explaining why Obi-Wan would say that to Luke. During a PTSD-induced flashback, we could get a Clone Wars Anakin saying this to Obi-Wan explicitly, that one day, if he has a child, he wants them to inherit the lightsaber. This flashback could even be during a moment where Obi-Wan is watching over Luke, as we know he's going to be doing at this point in the timeline. As for Uncle Owen prohibiting Luke to associate with anything to do with his father, this is really easy to explain and show, because we know that Uncle Owen had qualms with Obi-Wan when he exiled on Tatooine. In A New Hope, Uncle Owen calls Obi-Wan a crazy old wizard, so the tension between the two characters can happen much more easily than the Anakin situation. Either way though, it'll be interesting to see how and if they address this. Other things that we need an explanation for is why Obi-Wan didn't recognize R2-D2. Some people think it's because Obi-Wan suffered such PTSD he didn't remember, while other fans believe he was playing coy in front of Luke to not reveal too much. Another thing the Kenobi series needs to explain is how Obi-Wan knew about Darth Vader's mechanical suit. In in Revenge of the Sith, it's revealed that Obi-Wan learns about Anakin's turn to the dark side through the security recordings. In terms of Obi-Wan finding out about Anakin's Sith name, Yoda name drops Darth Vader before tasking Obi-Wan to go and kill him. The boy you trained, gone he is, consumed by Darth Vader. But after their duel on Mustafar, Obi-Wan walks away leaving Vader to burn. He never sees him getting a mechanical suit, but in A New Hope, Obi-Wan says to Luke that Vader is more machine than man. This implies that he's seen what Vader looks like. We know that it's a possibility that Obi-Wan and Vader are going to duel again before their final duel in A New Hope, but many Star Wars fans are adamant that this breaks canon. Whether they duel before episode 4 again or not, the show does need to explain how Obi-Wan knows of Vader's suit. There are many other aspects of the original trilogy which may be left up in the open, but I do hope that Obi-Wan Kenobi does answer some of these. But either way, my dear friends, this is really huge news for Obi-Wan Kenobi and Ewan McGregor speaks very highly of it. I hope we get a release date of May the 4th, that would be absolutely incredible. But that, my dear friends, brings us to the end of this news update. If you guys enjoyed it, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're brand new and a huge welcome if you are. Hit that notification bell and down there in the description, you'll also find my Patreon. And on there, you get exclusive videos that are not found here on YouTube. You also get exclusive artwork, video previews, early releases, and most of all, you get access to my Discord server. It's a very fun place. You can chat with me and the other Megalorians. But otherwise, my dear friends, may the force be with you. Have an amazing day and I'll see you tomorrow.